My name is Wookni Vera. I'm an engineer over at HashiCorp working on Packer and the Packer um, open source uh, plugin ecosystem. Outside of Packer, I focus on the Go Bridge and the GDN meetups. So happy to talk Go meetups, community. I'm your person. Uh, today, I'm going to be sharing with you a story about how my team and I are doubling down on Go's replace directive to fix a critical issue in the Packer, uh, in Packer and its plugin ecosystem without affecting our users. All right. For those who are not familiar with HashiCorp Packer, Packer is the second product built by HashiCorp back in 2013, and its focus is on building immutable images or containers for multiple platforms, cloud providers, and hypervisors. Um, there's three key components to, to Packer. There's Packer Core, which is the orchestrator that, that executes builds on a codified template. Um, the plugins, each of them are their own individual binaries that interface with multiple cloud providers and third-party services. And then there's the SDK. And the SDK sits in the middle and handles communication between Packer and the plugins, uh, specifically using uh, NetRPC and GOB. And we're going to dive into the GOB bit today. So as you could imagine, Packer has a lot of dependencies. Um, and some of those dependencies are interchangeable, and some of them, well, once they break, everything comes crashing down. And that's the story that I'm going to share with you. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk to you about a package called CTI. Um, this CTI package is a type system built in Go specifically for um, building configuration languages. So if anyone here has used HashiCorp's configuration language or HCL, this is what sits underneath it, right? And this package is used by Packer, Terraform, Nomad, pretty much every HashiCorp product. Okay, so um, before, before 2019, Packer relied solely on JSON, right? Everything, we, all of our templates were based on JSON. Now, with the popularity of Terraform, everyone loves HCL, so it only makes sense that Packer gets HCL. So in 2019, Packer added HCL. And because of how Packer's um, plugin architecture is uh, split up, we had to have, uh, we had to add the CTI dependency for, to all three components, the SDK, each of the plugins, and there's 40 plus plugins, right? So each of them had their own director dependency on CTI, and then there's Packer, right? And, and what we're doing on the Packer, the SDK, and, and on the plugins is we're using this type system with GOB to decode all the HCL so that the plugins know how to speak with AWS or Google or whatever to build an image and, and, and create a snapshot. And we're doing that using GOB as the main de uh, serialization and deserialization protocol, right, over the wire. Now, that worked until it didn't, right, because in August of 2022, uh, um, the CTI maintainers removed GOB, right? And you're probably saying, well, why did you move something like that if all the other products are using it? Uh, well, we, we learned on that, well, later on that no other product uses GOB. Turns out GOB in CTI was experimental. They built it for Terraform. They played around with it. They didn't go, they didn't go too far with it. But... We doubled down on that, right? We loved it. So um, where are we now? So moving forward, we, we had in October of 2022, you know, there was a pretty nice little gap there. Someone actually reported a crash. They reported a crash and say, hey, I upgraded to HCL2, this plugin, and every time I run a build, it crashes. What's going on? All right, so I don't know, for all those open source maintainers, we kind of let to see, you like to see, you know, thumbs up the issues a little bit before we start diving into it, right? So it was only one, it wasn't too big of a deal. But in April, things got a little weird, right? Because we had multiple people complaining and with the help of Dependabot, all of those, all of those updates to CTI were getting open, uh, new PRs were being opened against all the plugins, right? And people were just merging them. Why? Because everything was green. We had no tests in place to actually validate that this new version of CTI didn't work with the plugins. Okay, so it got serious in April. So um, took some time to look into what was going on to try to understand why God was removed, only to find out that it was experimental. And oh, also, um, CTI doesn't export a lot of information, right? And in order for God to actually work, that information has to be available, has to be available to the Reflect package. So it was really difficult for them to maintain, so they dropped it. And, you know, so now we have people, come, you know, saying, hey, these things, are, these things are crashing and we need a fix. So I met with the CTI maintainers and said, okay, what do we do? What are our options here, right? After, after looking through the code, it seems like we really have three options. Either A, we drop gob from Packer, right? It's good, breaking change. Or B, you know, the CTI folks say, oh, you can do what we do in Terraform and Nomad. We wrap CTI, right, using protobufs, and then we throw that over the wire, and, you know, and then we do a conversion. Great, but we can't do that, because if we do that, that breaks Packer. 
Then there's the last option. Well, you can fork it. You can fork it. You can maintain the gob support yourself, right? Nothing changes. Okay. I was like, all right, that's cool. But that's also no easy feat for two reasons. One, they removed it for a reason, right? And then two, we know nothing about CTI. We do Packer, Packer plugins, SDK. The last thing we want to do is a type system. So we thought about that for a second. We said, okay, what can we do here? Well, the first thing we can do is we can stop the bleed. So right around June, we notified all the plugin maintainers and we went across all the open, all the open PRs and we said, hey, don't merge. This is going to break your plugin and this is why. Don't merge, just pin to what Packer has. Um, and then we added, uh, I think um, Keith was speaking about it earlier, we added a type assertion. We said, okay, well, we need a way to stop people from merging these things because the tests are green. So we added a type assertion to say, hey, if you're using a version of CTI that doesn't support GOB, your build's gonna fail, your tests are gonna fail. So let's move forward. Okay, quick recap. So um, we had the three options. We had to remove GOB, breaking change, wrap GOB, breaking change, fork it. It wasn't the best thing. Um, all three, all valid options. So, but we really wanna do is one and two. One and two is we wanna get rid of GOB, right? Because like I said, uh, second product at HashiCorp, a lot of be uh, bespoke stuff, everyone else is using the new stuff. But um, what I learned as a maintainer is that, you know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, right? You start changing things, especially on something like Packer, um, where if people have tested it, they depended on it, and you start breaking people's infrastructure. So we couldn't do that. So we did the next best thing. We figured out a way to make time, right? We said, okay, well, we can't get the fix we really want, so how do we get there? So what we did was we made a plan. We said, okay, you know what? We're going to take the worst option. We are going to fork CTI. We are going to add GOB back to it. We're going to backport all the features that you already added to it. And we're going to test the hell out of it. And we're going to see if this thing works. And sure enough, it did. All was good. All right? Now, for those who may not know, a replay statement in Go is something you throw in your God, in your Go module. And think of it as a sort of a redirect, right? Where the package on the left is the one that you want but you, you, redirect it to, you redirect the source to come from the package on the, from the location on the right. So the first one, we wrote, we're, uh, we're loading the API from a local disk. And then uh, the second example, we're saying, hey, always replace whatever version of um, merge go with this particular version, right? So you can pin to a version, you can pin to a different location. And we did, this is what we did um, for the CTI. But like I said, there's multiple plugins, right? And these are multiple open source maintainers all around the world. And the replace works really nice if you're working locally or you're working with a small team. So having all of these plugin maintainers add uh, a replace seems pretty messy. So we did the next best thing. And for the sake of our users, we doubled down on the messy, right? So instead of having people manually enter the Go replace, we automated it for them, right? So for those who may have used the Go fix command, to update your Go code for the SDK, we did something very similar. We can introduce the Packer SDC fix command, which when you run it, it will automatically check your plugin to see if you need the fork. If you need the fork, it adds it. If you have an old version of the fork for you, it bumps it. If you have a newer version and we have to roll back, it downgrades it. And in the future, well, it's going to remove the fork when we have the fix in place. Then we added self-documenting comments, right? Because it's hard to, you know, to come and open up your plugin and find out it's broken. And then you run this weird command, you're like, what's going on? So we try to give people as much information as possible. Hey, this is the generated comment that gets added. When you run this command, you're gonna add, you, can, you can go back to this main issue and see why, why the command exists, what it solves, what's the problem, and what's our plan. And we doubled down on the ecosystem for GitHub, right? So um, one, of the, one of the gotchas with GoReplace is that if, if you ship it in a product that has a, like, uh, in, a, in a package that has a, has, a, has a tool that you would install through go install, if you try to run go install and you have it replaced in your main file, go is going to say, ah, eh, can't do that, right? We don't, because go replaces are meant for like local testing or whatever the case is. So we double down. So every time we push to map to main or we open a PR, we have a check that makes sure that no one accidentally put the replace into the SDK. And then we use our own tooling to inject the fix and we test that things work. Internally to HashiCorp, we also have a version of Packer that's internal only that builds every night on the latest SDK with the fix in place, again, to make sure stuff works because we wanna make sure that if it breaks, we know before our plugin maintainers do. Okay, and then we continue to, to double down on GitHub. So with the beauty of Dependabot, right? We, if you use it, you get all these beautiful upgrade notes every time they open a PR. So we documented the upgrade notes on, 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 on every release after we introduced this fix. So that when a, a maintainer gets this 
PR open against them and it's not quite working because they have to run this Packer SDC fix command every time they bump, they at least have the note for it. And then, like I said, we use depend the bot to do the heavy lifting for us. We didn't have to go and tell all the maintainers what was going on. We let depend the bot roll out the SDK fix and then with the upgrade notes, everybody knew what they were doing or what to do. And the beauty of it is that it's been working quite well, right? Um, I get a lot of issues with folks. So this is where we are. Uh, 151 is where we introduced the Go Replace. Uh, 52 is where everyone, you know, uh, 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 took it on and, and merged it in. 53 eh, was a kind of a, like a, there was a, a no op release. There was just a, a few like documentation changes into our embedded tooling. And then 50, uh, 5.4 was released two weeks ago. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's on the rise. Um, so we've been doing pretty good since we introduced it. We already have the fix in place where we've swapped, that we've moved over from Gob into Protobuf and Message Pack for serializing CTI, and we'll be releasing that in a couple of months. So this is how we double down, and this is how we made time to find our fix. So if you take any way, anything away from this talk, I would say as a maintainer, you can easily make breaking changes to fix our problem, but that comes at the user's cost, so don't do it. All right, always try to find the next best thing, and that's the second point, right? You wanna try to figure out what can you do next to get you in the position to make the fix that you want and give yourself some more time? And then lastly, when the solution that you have in hand is not the prettiest, you double down on the ugly and you try to make it as easy as possible for, me, for people to adopt. Thanks.